An extra £1 billion will be used to insulate thousands of homes across England, Scotland and Wales. The government has announced a three-year programme beginning next spring, which will provide loft and cavity wall insulation. They say it should help those who qualify save hundreds of pounds on their bills. Our political correspondent Damien Grammaticus reports. When it comes to our homes, the UK is said to have the oldest and least energy efficient housing in Europe. Much of it leaky old Victorian terraces built over a hundred years ago, a legacy of the Industrial Revolution. There is already a government scheme to get energy firms to help improve the worst homes. Called Eco, it's been in place for almost a decade and is open to those in social housing or who own their own homes or rent privately and are on some benefits. It's now being expanded with another £1 billion. But only starting in spring next year, and eligibility extended to those in lower council tax bans. Fuel poverty campaigners say more should be done now for the most vulnerable. This scheme is, is not designed to reach the most vulnerable. It's designed to reach people who haven't been able to benefit from previous schemes. So I think it's intended to be a little broader than the, the existing government programmes. But look, the exam question that we have is helping those people over the winter and into the next winter who are just suffering the most from unaffordable energy prices, which is why for my organisation, we believe government focus should be on the worst first, helping people in the greatest risk and greatest jeopardy. More of this money should be going to help them. If you are eligible, your energy firm will do a survey and pay for the improvements, usually low cost insulation or upgrades to your heating. The average cost, about £1,500 per home, it could cut your energy bill by a few hundred pounds a year. Labour have described it as a reheated announcement with no new resources and campaigners say to really change things will cost billions more. This winter the government is now planning to spend £18 million on more public information about how to reduce energy usage, including advice to turn down the temperature of your boiler, turn off radiators when you're not using a room and seal drafts from windows and doors. But many worry that the biggest concern should be for those who won't be able to heat their homes at all. Damien Grammaticus, BBC News, Westminster. Well, let's get more now on all of this from our chief political correspondent, Nick Early. Morning to you, Nick. The government's obviously hoping to deal with uh, uh, several issues with this, obviously, to, to look at those homes which badly need insulation, uh, to, to cut energy bills, to deal with that uh, energy price crisis, and also perhaps to uh, deal with some of the concerns of protest groups like Insulate Britain. For a while now, Anita, we've been hearing these calls, haven't we, for more money to be put into insulation as part of a broader long-term strategy to try and bring down energy reliance and to try and bring down energy prices. Well, the government's saying today that this is part of its plan. As you heard Damien report there, a billion pounds to help some homes uh, with the cost of further insulating themselves, bringing down energy dependence, bringing down energy prices. There is that big question though, isn't there, about whether it's enough cash, a billion pounds is probably not that much in the grand scheme of things. We had the, the Energy Secretary Grant Shapps on BBC Breakfast earlier though, and here was how he set out what that money was for. This is just the latest in a whole string of schemes. We've already spent, I think it's 6.6 .6 billion on improving uh, millions of homes so far. Um, this is actually a scheme for people who have been left out thus far because uh, their, their homes haven't qualified. It's going to be open to everybody, regardless of whether you live in private rented or you own your own home. Uh, and uh, it's designed for you to be able to take measures to uh, improve your home if your energy certificate is a D or worse. Um, and those measures could save you over 300 quid a year. There's also going to be a public campaign to try and uh, educate people a bit more on how to keep energy prices down. The government's going to put about £18 million into that campaign to, to let us all know those simple tips to, to try and keep your energy prices low. Um, but there is that broader question, I think, and that broader pressure on the government to come up with a strategy, a longer term strategy to try and make sure that future energy shocks aren't as significant as the one that we've seen in recent months as a result of the war 
in Ukraine and the increasing friction with Russia that's led to various countries seeing much energy, higher energy bills and inflation as a result. Labour want the government to come up with a broader strategy. Have a listen to their shadow business secretary, Jonathan Reynolds. What the job of government to do, this is fine, but what the job of government to do is to also map out that longer term plan. So, for instance, our plans on the Labour side is for a future Labour government to make sure that we are free of this dependency on volatile fossil fuels, become a clean energy superpower by 2030, map out that big ambitious future, because I'm afraid whilst these, these laudable initiatives will play a role, if we are still exposed to the kind of uh, pressures we've seen leading into this energy crisis and we were too exposed in terms of decisions government had made going into them will not get to the position we need to be because we cannot be repeating the kind of pressures people have been under this winter and going into next year. We've got to see a bit more ambition, a lot more ambition actually from the government to make sure we're not in this position again. So that's Labour's position on this. A lot of debate about what can be done to bring down energy prices. There's also a big debate going on about what can be done to produce more energy in the UK. I think we're going to hear a lot about that over the next few days. One of the debates that's playing out on that front is about onshore wind farms. You might remember, Anita, if you uh, cast your mind back to April, which does feel like another political era, doesn't it? Cast your mind back to April, Rishi Sunak was standing for the Conservative leadership. He talked about not lifting the ban on new onshore wind farms. Well, there are a bunch of Conservative MPs who want him to do just that, including some big names, Boris Johnson and Liz Truss among them. And there is a growing head of steam for that plan to lift a ban on onshore wind farms to try and make sure the more energy is being produced in the UK. We got a bit of a hint from ministers, I think, this morning from Grant Shapps that the government is looking for a compromise on this. Labour are backing an amendment which you see the ban lifted. So it looks like the government might actually struggle to have the numbers. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear talk of some sort of compromise quite soon. Yeah, you're right, Nick. A lot has happened in politics since April. Um, thank you very much. Nick Erdley there, our chief political correspondent.